One of the misconceptions of the Silicon Valley bank crisis is that it's just like 2008 or just like FTX in that there was some kind of widespread fraud. But as of now, it kind of seems like it was just a lot of people not quite paying attention and then one brief moment of very intense panic. My name is Darius Rafion. I'm a senior reporter covering venture capital and startups here at Insider. Silicon Valley Bank was founded in 1983 by two folks at Bank of America who came up with the idea over a poker game and basically realized that there was no financial institution to serve this growing Silicon Valley tech startup scene. This is pre-Google, pre-Facebook. So for the longest time, they were kind of just this boutique institution. They did foster this reputation as being the hometown bank of Silicon Valley. They sponsored a ton of really exciting, lavish events. They had a, a famously had a ski chalet where they would invite founders and investors to come hang out. And they kind of grew as you know the tech startups grew. It takes a very particular type of banker to want to work with those companies. It's more risky and it's less lucrative. It took them about 36 years to get to $100 billion in deposits, and then took them one year to go from $100 billion to $200 billion. They inadvertently became the 16th largest bank in America, uh, which was the start of some of their problems. They didn't do a great job of managing that massive inflow of deposits that they got. They suddenly had $100 billion that they didn't know what to do with. They ended up parking it in long-term, low-yielding, very safe mortgage-backed securities. That seemed like an okay bet when interest rates were near zero, but as interest rates rose, the value of that portfolio took a nosedive. So they decided that they needed to raise some money to kind of plug that hole. And they didn't do a great job of communicating why they were raising that money, and it started to get people sort of worried. One sort of very pivotal moment was when the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank, Greg Becker, told people, don't panic, stay calm, don't panic. The moment he said that, people started to panic. And because it's such a small, tight-knit community, everyone descended on this bank and said, we want our money back. I mean, obviously, we've had bank runs as long as we've had banks. You know, the, the way a bank works is they don't have all of the money in cash sitting in a vault. You know, they, they take in deposits, they lend it out. And as long as everyone doesn't come at once and ask for their money, it's fine. The thing that was different here was, A, we had a very tight-knit group of people who were all chronically online and constantly tweeting and constantly tweeting at each other. And what could have been a bump in the road became sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the other thing is we're now in the era of online banking. I mean, people could just log into their accounts and say, I want to pull my five, ten, hundred million dollars right now. So it just created this perfect storm where something that might have played out a little more slowly was happening minute by minute and they suddenly had to come up with you know, tens of billions of dollars that they didn't have. A lot of big companies that people might have heard of, you know, Roku, Roblox, Etsy, Vox Media, had their money at this bank. And you know, it really did look for a moment like some of these companies were gonna struggle to make payroll, were gonna struggle to pay their vendors, and that's when the federal government stepped in, said nobody's getting any of their money until we figure all this out. This isn't really a bailout in the traditional sense. It's not the case that, you know, the, the federal government is having to write a big check to, you know, make investors whole again. The Federal Reserve did step in and create um, what they call an emergency lending facility to essentially backstop deposits, meaning that people who had money at the bank can access that money. This is a bank that survived the dot-com bust of 2001. This is a bank that survived the 2008 financial crisis. They really were a source of a lot of stability and support for the startup community in 2008. And so that's why it's so surprising that they were able to survive all these huge crises and then something as simple as a routine capital raise just completely sunk them. And so I think it's, uh, a moment of, or should be a moment of a little bit of humility for, for the venture capital community um, who maybe need to acknowledge that they are not always the smartest people in the room.